Let's take a look at this example. We're going to start from drawing the voltage sources. Okay, so this is my VCC. Okay, this is my positive terminal. This is the negative terminal. And this is my VEE. This is my positive terminal. This is the negative terminal. And the connection between the two voltage sources is nothing else, just my ground. Okay, this is my VCC and this is my VEE. First, we're supposed to do the DC analysis. When we do the DC analysis, we're supposed to assume that input uh, signals, okay, the sources, I mean the input uh, signal sources are grounded, okay? In other words, we assume that the input signal is equal to zero, okay? So at this moment, we are going to assume that my non-inverting input is connected to the ground, okay? Just for the moment, okay? We are going to assume that we have no signal going to the non-inverting input. Next, we're supposed to find VE. Why are we supposed to find VE? VE, let me remind you, this is the voltage at emitter of transistor Q1 and voltage at emitter of transistor Q2. Okay, and we found last time that the current is going to flow from VEE through the ground, it's going to go to each base. Okay, keep in mind that this is grounded. And together with the IC, they are going to create I. E, okay, and if you are want to if you want to find voltage at the meter, you're supposed to simply realize that it's nothing else, just negative VBE. So this is negative VBE, and this is equal negative 0.7 volts. Okay. We have to simply find the voltage across resistor R3. V R3 is equal VE minus VEE. So we can write that VR3 is equal VRE and this is equal VE negative 0.7 volts minus negative 15 volts because VEE is equal negative 15 volts. So VR3 is equal 14.3 volts. Okay, so this is the voltage across resistor R3 and uh, in some books you are going to find that this is VRE. Next we, we can find the tail current, okay, tail current. So this is IT, okay, IT is called IRE also and this is also called in our case, I R3. So where tail current you can find by dividing voltage across resistor R3 by the resistance of resistor R3. So I have 14.3 volts divided by 25 kilo ohms. So I can write that my tail current is equal, I'm going to use the calculator, 14.3 divided by 25 exponent 3 equals 572 microamps. Okay, so this is the current which will go through the resistor R3. Next, keep in mind that the current which will go uh, through the emitter of transistor Q1 and the current which will go through the emitter of transistor Q2, right, they're going to be equal. So you're supposed to simply write that IE1 is equal to IE2, okay, and this is nothing else, just half of the tail current. So if IT divided by 2, where my IT is equal 572 microamps divided by 2. 
this is equal 286 microamps okay so next you're supposed to keep in mind that the base current DC base current through each transistor is having kind of small value comparing with IC and IE so we can say that IE1 is approximately equal to IC1 and this is equal to 286 microamps and also we can write that I E2 is approximately equal to IC2 and this is equal to 86 microamps. Okay, so we can say that we found ICQ because my ICQ, I can say this is equal to my IC, which is simply nothing else, just my IC1 and this is also IC2, okay, so this is having value 286 microamps. Next we're supposed to find VCEQ. In order to find VCEQ or VCE, we're supposed to find the voltage at each collector, okay, I mean DC voltage at each collector. In order to do so, I simply write the formula that VC is equal VCC minus IC times RC where VCC is equal 15 volts minus IC we found that IC is equal 286 microamps times RC and RC in our case is equal torrid to kilohms. So I have torrid to kilohms. This is equal, use the calculator, we have 15 minus 286 exponent 6 negative times torrid to exponent 3. This is equal 5.84 volts. Okay, this is voltage at each collector. Next, we're supposed to find VCE. VCE is equal to VCEQ, and this is nothing else, just VC minus VE, where VC we found is equal 5.84 volts minus. VE which is equal negative 0.7 volts so I have negative 0.7 volts and this is equal 6.54 volts so this is my VCEQ so we found ICQ and we found VCEQ Next, we're supposed to find the input impedance at the non-inverting input. Okay, so in order to do so, we're supposed to find first AC emitter resistance. So I have to find small re. Small re is equal 26 millivolts over IE. Some books use 25 millivolts. I got used to, to 26 millivolts so um, which value you're supposed to use you're supposed to use the value which is used in your class okay the one which your professor uses okay or the book which you use okay so but in my case I'm going to use 26 millivolts so I have 26 millivolts divided by IE which is equal to my IE1 or IE2 okay it doesn't matter which one you're going to use because they have the same value so I have 286 microamps this is equal I'm going to use the calculator 
26 exponent 3 negative divided by 286 exponent 6 negative is equal 90.9 .9 ohms. Okay, so this is 90.9 ohms. This is the value of my AC emitter resistance. Now I can use the formula for the input impedance. Z in is equal 2 times beta AC times small re. This is equal 2 times, okay, in our case beta is given, but it's not specified if this is DC or AC. That's why I assume that my DC beta is equal to AC beta and is equal 180. Okay, that's what I'm going to use over here, 180 times small re. So I have 90.9 .9 ohms. Let me remind you that in some books you are going to see re prime. So anytime you you see that I write re, it means re prime. Okay, this is equal. I'm going to use the calculator again. So I have 2 times 2 times 180 times 90.9 this is equal 32.72 ohms okay so this is the input impedance okay at my non inverting input okay over here between the base and ground next i suppose to find the output impedance. Z out for this configuration is equal to RC, which is equal, in our case, torrid 2 kilo ohms. So I have torrid 2 kilo ohms. This is my Z out. Next, we're supposed to find output voltage. In order to find the output voltage for the single ended input and on balance output i supposed to find the gain of this amplifier okay differential gain so let me write the formula for you so this is differential gain is equal rc over 2 re okay where rc in our case it's nothing else just R1 or R2. So I'm going to write over here that my RC is equal to 2 kilo ohms divided by 2 times 90.9 ohms. Close parenthesis. Equals. Again, I'm going to use the calculator. This is 32 exponent 3 divided by open parenthesis 2 times 90.9 .9, close parenthesis equals this is equal 176.01 176.01 this is the differential gain of my differential amplifier next we're supposed to realize that the the gain Right? You can find also from the formula differential gain is equal to V out over the differential input voltage. Okay? So differential input voltage is nothing else just the the difference of the voltages at my inputs. So I suppose to write that this is the voltage at the non-inverting input minus voltage at inverting input. So this is my differential voltage. So if you want to find V out, this is nothing else. Of course, you're supposed to use the algebra. AD, which stands for the differential voltage gain, or uh, in some books you are going to see AV, times the differential input voltage, which is 
as I said, voltage at the non-inverting input minus voltage at inverting input. Of course, you're supposed to use the algebra. So AD, okay, differential voltage gain is equal 176.01 times the difference of my input voltages. Okay, so my voltage at the non-inverting input is equal 3 millivolts peak and because the base of my transistor Q2 is connected to the ground so the voltage at the inverting input is equal zero. That's why I'm going to write that my differential differential uh, input voltage is nothing else just 3 millivolts minus zero volts. Okay, this is equal. I have 176.01 times 3 exponent 3 negative. This is equal 528 millivolts. Okay, and this is my output voltage. So, we found ICQ, we found VCEQ, we found Z in, we found Z out, and we found V out, so we can say that the problem is solved.